Welcome back to another episode of Exploring Whiskeys. I'm Eric. I'm Kevin. And before we get to this episode, if you could just throw that thumbs up, you know, just what, what like Eric likes to say, swipe, swipe the thumbs up. Thumbs. Swipe the thumbs up. Anyway, today we are going to be doing the Smoke Wagon Straight Bourbon Whiskey. This is the baseline of what is one, a relatively Kid. relatively new it's the late 2019 but it blew up on the scene here it really last did. year 2020 it really did um, i feel like when it made it here to nashville it was gone yeah it hit the it shelves was, and it was gone and it now it's like that i see multiple posts of oh they have smoke wagon there generally not this particular bottle uh there is a cash drink uh, there is uncut. an uncut on filter there's a, there's a couple different releases that are slightly fancier bottles. They right? are they're brown and they have wax, I think, on the top. And they, like the the glass, yeah, brown, has like flowers in it, not a picture like this, little wax hoo-ha-ha -ha on the top. So <laughs> they, they do have some fancy things on some of their higher ends. Oddly enough, from what I recall, drinking the whole line, sampling the whole line, the baseline and the unfiltered, uncut, highest end were the two best the two best the ones that were in the middle were hmm. one was really off and one was okay yeah. <laughs> that's what i remember doing the whole lineup this is their baseline this company is based out of vegas, vegas. so they source all their juice from indiana mgp um, we've mentioned that before mm -hmm. and then they actually they barrel it and age it in vegas which i didn't think you could you gotta imagine with the humidity, not, lack of humidity, like yeah. you gotta be losing a lot angel of angel share, share because of that. <clears throat> yeah, whatever. That's that's on them, right? So their story's working because it's flying off the shelf. It is flying so. off the shelf. It's got a, it got a lot of attention real fast, and yeah, it's it's working for them. This, but they're smart. I mean, this is their entry into it, and they price it at thirty bucks. Thirty bucks. 92 and a half proof. Mm -hmm. Solid proof for a whiskey, for a baseline starter whiskey. They didn't go down to that, you know, that 80 range or whatever that they legally could. So, uh, no age statement here, though it is straight bourbon. So, if there's no age statement and it's straight bourbon, it's got to be at least four years it old. Kind of young, though. Well, it could be four years old. <laughs> uh, that'd be my guess. They do release the mash bill of, yeah. They're all high rye. High rye. rye. <laughs> Very high rye. 60% corn, 36% rye, 4% malted barley. So we're talking, you know, it, this is a very high rye. Higher than 1792, right? They're not, I don't think they're even 36%. Oh. They're like in the 20-somethings, I think. Oh. That smells... That smells the rye. Is That's all I get. All I'm getting off that nose. And it's that... <laughs> it's that Northeast rye. It's oh. that whistle pig type rye. That's what it's reminding me of. Well, what's this... It... Get started. <laughs> it is pickerel. Uh -huh. Yeah, MGP's rye is generally picked by the history. All leads back to Dave Pickerel. So, yeah, I could see that. More on the palate. Yeah, no, that's not a bad palate. Mm -mm. I mean, you get the rye's there. Mm -hmm. There's spice. There's, but there's more. There's a sweetness. That's a. There's a fruit there. Why, I want to say fig. I'm not even sure I've ever had figs, but for some reason, fig just jumped into my brain. Yeah, I like the palate way more than the nose. Nose is a little off-putting for me. Very, very oaky. A hint of vanilla? Ish. Yeah. <laughs> Ish. It's a little bit there. It's not super sweet. I get oak. This I get to very tobacco, leather yeah. notes, barrel notes, the dryness. Yep. Yeah, the, any of those like sweet caramels and no, they're buried. If they're there, they're buried. I don't think they're there. <laughs> okay, I'm not arguing that one. <laughs> it does um, maybe a touch of licorice. 
on the finish. Like it kind of gets to that good and not good and plenty. What is it, Mike and Ike? Which one's the one that's no, like licorice? -y? Good and plenty is a black licorice. Inside. Yeah, a little bit of that on the end of it, like a yeah, sweeter a licorice type note. It's not spectacular. <laughs> that's not my profile, obviously. No. We, Definitely have covered that. That you know anything that where it starts to get the high ride. But part. when we sampled the rest of them, this one. This one was good. good. And, and and I remember the uncut, unfiltered, like the their full proof, barrel proof, the, whatever it was. The, the, the entry and the high were good. Yeah. It's the middle that. The middle got a little funny. Yeah. Yeah, but I remember that one being really good too. And I don't remember it being, like, aggressively rye. Even though it's was full proofed. Yeah. It's very weird. But, I mean, interesting concept of trying to do this in Vegas. Yeah. It's, yeah, I don't... I get it. I get. I mean, coming got, from got, Vegas, like, you got to build in... <laughs> you got a lot of built-in uh, drinkers in that area, I would think. So, distribution's probably not too difficult. I would think it's probably in every bar out there. I would think so. I would think so. You know, they, they tend not, to be... I'd be shocked. Vegas does promote Vegas. Mm -hmm. So I could definitely think that they... Yeah, it's probably in all the bars out there. But you got to think, though, mm -hmm. with the lack of humidity, we've done the, the one from Colorado. There's not... Right. So you're getting one extreme, not the other. Yeah, you're getting a, no humidity, probably no like, barometric pressure changes. You're... Getting so extreme heat. It is a desert. Out, but you're not pulling it's, anything out, really out of the wood. Yeah, but, you, I mean, you're getting extreme heat, and it cools off. And this one is all from the sec, the top two floors of the warehouse. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, that's what. That's one of the things this guy is. So well, you're going to get the heavy. Wait, is that one? That's this one? Yeah, this one's first hand-selected from the top two floors of the warehouse. To create bourbon that has flavor, which is smooth and rich beyond its years. Okay. So they're thinking they can do the same thing like Texas does? Is that their, their idea? I guess. But there's more humidity in Texas, though. Yeah. Let's but see. the hot summers yeah. and, and things like that. Really hot. And they, they get snow there. Yeah. Parts of Texas. <laughs> Again, I like the concept. I like them. I like the concept. I like the design. Mm -hmm. They really, I, I think that's how they exploded last year. I think their marketing is on point. Yeah. They they played up the Wild West idea with the cross <laughs> guns. They even put in a, uh, a a phrase that's was kind of popular out there, and it's, it's back here, and it's in Latin. I'm not going to say the <laughs> Latin part, but drink for we must, we must die is what the Latin says, but they twisted it just a touch <laughs> to drink and enjoy today because we won't be around forever. I, I, yeah. I can get into that. Mm -hmm. Like, that's kind of a cool idea. The fact that they source, they do their own blending. They use the word bespoke, bespoke. Blending. bespoke so blending. So they're, they're customizing their blends. I kind of thought that's what all blends <laughs> were. <laughs> they're custom blends. Anyway. Again, we gotta make it to MGP. As many people that I are really, yeah. sourcing their juice from there, I totally and like agree. these guys. They're sourcing it, but then they're taking them back and blending it. And doing, yeah, yep. they're blending it. They're aging it out there. They're doing something to it. Same thing. Penelope was doing mm -hmm. the same idea. Like we've done a lot of MGP whiskey that is different. I mean, it it comes across different. I mean, the fact that such a high rye coming I think, I in this like one, it's, it's acceptable now. I feel like. It's 15, becoming 20 more. years ago. It was yeah. like, oh, I'm not going to drink that. Yeah, it's sourced. It's sourced. Ew. No, I want someone that makes their own. Now right. it's all the rage. I mean, it's about lot, the blending, the barreling, there. the finishing. I mean, Joseph Magnus with the mm -hmm. finishing. There's there's so many. That actually has gotten better. Yeah. I just took another. Like During that sip, that actually was a slightly better sip. There's a little bit more of a caramel note that comes through. Mm, you're getting it. Starting to <laughs> starting to get it. Yay. I'm not. No, you no, didn't. <laughs> no, no. No, that was better. I'm gonna say that was better. There was you a sweetness I've, there. I've enjoyed the bottle, so but I don't I don't know. I've, and I've Do you enjoy a, it with a cube? I, uh not a full block. Just I will like a, drop a regular refrigerator cube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that just kind of like 
opening up some of the oils, mm -hmm. breaking that surface tension, and just chilling the rye. The rye's aggressive. It is. But I mean, for 30 bucks, I would buy it again if you find it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. It's not a bad. It, I, I know, yeah, I've had it a couple different. Uh, <laughs> I've not bought a bottle. Um, <laughs> It is a high rye. I know it's a high rye, and I know everybody else loves it, so I don't need to buy one. Everybody I know when it came out, a friend of mine was at the store and texted me a picture of it, and he's like, you want a bottle? I said, well, are you buying a bottle? He goes, I'm, yeah, I'm buying one. I said, I'll sample yours first. Because <laughs> I just saw it come out like on yeah. Instagram and yeah, Facebook, that was, and I was like, mm, I'll wait. That was the funniest part, was it blew up across all the social media. Yep. And you, you need to go to your liquor store and find Smoke Wagon. I, I don't know what I've they did to get that, but... I've seen it at one, maybe two. Liquor stores now? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a solid whiskey for the price. It's a decent value. It's a, not quite in my wheelhouse. It's yeah. a little rye aggressive for me. It probably would be a good Manhattan. Probably. I can mm -hmm. see that being a good Manhattan, uh, the, the rye notes there. You got a little bit left. <laughs> it's probably enough <laughs> to make us each any, one. Uh, don't ha I have the vermouth, but I don't have the cherries. I got that. Maybe this weekend. First down, smoke yeah. wagon. I think there's three more in the line. Either two more or three more. two more. But okay. We'll get there. Yep. I wonder if Morgan still has some. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> probably. So, well, again, first one, we've got at least two more to go, maybe three. Yeah. Maybe one of these days we'll make it out to Vegas and can swim by and check these guys out. Now that <laughs> would be worthwhile. <laughs> we appreciate you joining. Hope you enjoyed the episode. As we said in the beginning, if you did, we encourage you to swipe that like button at the bottom of the screen. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get notified every time we put on a new episode. And let us know, have you tried any of the smoke wagons? What are your thoughts? Did you see the marketing blow up last year that, that we saw? Uh, let us know. Love to hear from you. Thanks for joining. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.